to show you how a finite impulse response filter actually works and again this is a 1-bit CMOS version of it so it's only square waves but it works very well for demonstrating how the filter effect actually works so for a full schematic check out my website I'll have all the info on there in the description of exactly what I've done but this is just a demonstration to kind of easily show how the filtering effect happens so I'm going to turn up one tap now and what you're gonna see is the same square wave but delayed and this is the fifth tap because it's the only one right now that I have a pot for on its own so what you're gonna see is the square wave remains the same but the tap starts to come up part way through it see there's the tap, go to a higher note, it'll be a little easier to show. So this is the source, it's delayed and then the tap starts to come up and at this point the original wave you see ends, so just the tap now and that tap continues to here so you end up with two steps. Every tap you get two steps. So now you see I'm going to I'm going to add in another tap that is actually a combination of taps one and nine. So here's the fifth tap, and here's one and nine. Now you see two steps that start to come in at once. So you see the one at the end here, this is nine, and then the one at the beginning, this is the one and you notice that there's a big gap between the start of the first square wave and nine and hardly any gap between the first square wave and the first tap. And then as I continue to add taps, you see that I just keep adding more and more steps. is the general shape of the wave if I was just to kind of connect the dots it's now 
not a square wave, it's much more rounded out, almost a triangle, if I was just to connect the dots. But because of these little spikes in between, those spikes add harmonics. So the general shape has removed harmonics, but at the same time I'm adding little peaks of harmonics in there. And you'll see that when I go to the frequency analysis. I just wanted to point that out now. Um, one other thing I want to show you is as I increase the sample rate of the delay line, you're going to see the distance between these two, between all these steps, shrink. So there's the original, as slow as I can have the sample rate go right now. And as I increase it, you see I can get right back to almost a square wave. The steps are still there, but they're so small that you can't even make them out in this scope. And one other, th one other thing that I did with this circuit is I added the source wave in as a modulator of the sample rate. So what that does is when the source square wave comes in at the start, it increases the sample rate and all these steps at the start end up being really small. But then the source square wave is the first one to drop out and it goes low and the sample rate lowers and that leaves all these steps at the end untouched. And I'll show you that. steps shrinking down a lot but the ones at the end are untouched and it creates a sound that's similar to a symmetrical distortion because you're turning one side of the wave into almost a square wave but leaving the other side of the waveform untouched switch over to frequency analysis. And you see here's the frequency analysis chart for just a regular square wave. And as I add in taps, you'll see how the general shape is filtered, removing harmonics, but those little steps that I mentioned actually add harmonics at specific frequencies. So watch as I add in taps 2 and 8. see it a bit better on a lower frequency here. So you see right here that the frequency has dipped, the harmonics have dipped, yet here they've actually gone up. Well, it disappeared behind my finger now, but there they've gone up at the same time over here has gone down, and also here has gone down. a spike right there that completely disappears but then it comes back up and if I increase the amplitude you can see it even more now there's a series of peaks and valleys that come in and that's called a comb filter because if you were to connect the dots on all these little spikes you would see that it creates a shape that's like a comb And as I add in more taps, I can it will start to emphasize certain areas. Watch as I add in more. This is a series.
series of comb filters all being added together. And certain areas get reduced a lot, certain areas get increased a lot, depending on which taps used and how much of each. So you see this spike right here, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I think that's what you hear is almost a resonant type sound. Right? Just above 2000 there. And you'll hear it as I play notes. A sort of zap. And I'll show you why that zap happens. As I increase the sample rate, you see that the, the peaks and valleys start to spread out. started to come out. So that zap is actually this peak right here being brought down quickly. Similar to a resonant peak. waveform that has a lot of re resonance. You see those? It's not identical, but I think that's part of what's giving that resonant peak. Because now I'm adding, I'm increasing the peak at that around 2000 hertz so much that you're seeing that frequency show up in the waveform here. And that's a combination of all those stacking and cancelling each other out and adding on top of each other.